Hi, welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to talk about designing APIs with typed throws in Swift. As you might know, Swift 2.0 added the ability to have throwing functions in Swift. This was completely new back then. Before that, we were using um, typically an enum called result that's now also part of the language. Back then it wasn't, but now it is. And people really liked the ability to throw errors and handle them as needed, but it wasn't quite what we really wanted. All right, so in this video, we're going to look at the very first update that Apple has actually been able to, to add to throwing errors and it's been a long time coming. A lot of people have been asking for this and finally we're getting it, All right? So we are finally going to get the ability to tell Swift which kind of errors we want to throw from our functions. And it's the first update they've done to throwing errors in nine years. So that's been a while. My name is Donnie and I will take you on a tour of designing APIs with typed errors in Swift. We'll start off by looking at the current situation to kind of see what we can do today before typed errors. And then we'll take a look at the new, and then of course I'll give you my thoughts on what I think of this new capability of throwing errors. So typed errors are part of uh, Swift Evolution Proposal 413. It's currently been accepted, but it's not been implemented yet. So that means that we don't have it in Swift 5.10 officially, um, and it, it remains to be seen when exactly we'll get it. But this proposal has been accepted and it will be added to Swift for that reason. So if we look at the situation today, we can throw errors and catch them. And it looks a little bit like this, right? We have a function and we call it in a do block. We say try, for example, load feed, and then we can print an error if one occurred. Notice that the catch block receives this error argument. Uh, we don't have to tell it that it's going to get that like we would in a closure. Uh, it's just gonna know that there's going to be a property available called error and that it will be of type error, right? Error is the protocol that we must all conform to. Um, and we can throw multiple different error types from this load feed function, right? And as long as this object conforms to the error protocol, it is a valid Swift error. And we can switch over the error that was thrown in our catch block to see which specific error was thrown by a function. Let's look at an example of that. So if we have this do try load feed and we catch an error, we can use a switch to say, well, if this is an authentication error by casting it to an auth error, uh, then we'll handle that in a specific way. If we received a network error, we can do that by casting the received error to a network error. Then we're going to do something else. And we'll have a default in case we received something that's neither an auth error nor a network error. All right, so this is how we can um, inspect the, the error that was thrown today and how we can sort of go into the details using a switch. Um, for every case, we have to cast to something specific. And this allows us to have this uh, specific error handling, but we could also want to inspect what is the reason for getting a certain error. So for example, if we have our auth error, we might want to go in and say, well, why did we get this auth error? What went wrong? What happened? And because there could be multiple reasons to throw a specific auth in the network or anything else kind of error. And the code that you're seeing right now allows us to switch over the auth error inside of our regular switch, right? So this would be nested inside of the case let auth error. And you can imagine that if we put this kind of stuff together, that our switch is going to become rather big and it's going to be pretty hard for somebody who wants to read this code to see exactly what's happening because there's a single catch with a switch in it and maybe there's gonna be multiple nested switches and that's no good. And Apple has actually solved this by allowing us to specialize our caches, uh, which removes the need for that outer switch, right? So if we refactor our switch that you saw before to use this specialized catch, it's going to look a little bit like this, right? So this is possible today. We can say catch our auth error as an auth error, and we're gonna have an auth error inside of that catch. We're gonna have another catch that's gonna say catch let network error as a network error, and we're gonna have a network error inside of that catch. And we're going to have our generic common purpose catch to inspect the error that was thrown there. Now, so that's kind of nice, but we do need a dedicated catch for every single error type, which is not great. Uh, it could get very unwieldy. And the trickiest part is there's gonna be two pain points with this. First, we don't know which errors we might get. All right, so we're gonna add some specializations to our catches, thinking that this function might throw them. 
probably will know if we wrote these functions ourselves, but the compiler is not going to help us when we add or remove errors, right? So we might be having catch blocks for errors that will never even be thrown. And on top of that, we also always need this generic catch because we don't know which errors can be thrown. Again, the compiler isn't going to tell us, hey, you're missing a catch here. So um, we're gonna have to have this general purpose catch in case we receive something that we did not anticipate. And that's more or less where SE413 comes in uh, because that proposal allows us to tell a caller which error will thrown from a specific function. Um, again, this proposal is currently in the accepted state, so it's not been implemented, which means that I'm kind of freestyling here, or rather I'm, I'm, I'm sort of reasoning about what's in the proposal, what we might be able to do, um, but we can't use this yet, right? So keep that in mind as you watch the rest of this video. This is not available and it will be soon, but it's not right now. So type throws allow us to inform call sites of the errors that we will be throwing at them, right? So here's what that could look like as an example. This load feed function that we had, it will get a throws and we'll tell it it's going to throw a feed error. Right, so what is a feed error? It is something that conforms to the error protocol, but it's now specific. So if we call load feed, we know that if something goes wrong, it's going to give us something of the feed error object. And the reason I defined feed error here is because we can only define a single error type for now. So this code is not valid. We can't say this load feed function is going to throw either an auth error or a network error. We have to say it's going to be a feed error. And what the feed error could look like in our case, it might be something like this, where we have this enum feed error that's gonna to conform to the error protocol with two cases, auth error, network error, and then each of these two cases is also going to conform to the error protocol, and we can start inspecting those in our catch block. And we could even expand, expand this um, enum with generic other case that would look a little bit like this, uh, where we can just say, well, if we receive an error uh, that we don't, have yet or or that we you know want to give you but is not one of the two that we specify we could say there's also going to be another error there's going to be any error right so there's going to be anything that conforms to the error protocol okay so if we make our load feed throw a feed error we could write our do catch pair a little bit like this we have this do try feed uh, try load feed again just like we had before and in the catch we can now switch over our error and we can say well if the case is going to be an auth error, then we have a let auth error in there. We can handle the authentication error. If we have a network error, then we can handle that. Now, this is a lot cleaner than what we had before, but um, we still have to have a switch, right? So the main benefit here is that we don't have to have this generic error case because we know what we're going to get and we know which sub errors there might exist on that object. Um, but what if we call multiple functions in our do block, right? So if you look at this code, we could say let load feed equals try load feed. And then we could say try to catch this feed. These two functions might actually be throwing different kinds of errors at us. So what happens if we put that in our do catch? Well, in the catch, we're going to get a generic error just like we had before. So we kind of revert back to a catch that receives an untyped error or an error box, right? Could be anything in there as long as it conforms to the error protocol. So we can actually make our code a little bit cleaner by being more explicit in what we want to receive or what we expect to receive. But at the same time, we are a little bit limited by only being allowed to give a single error type, which means we're still gonna have to switch over the error and figure out what's in there. But it's going to be a little bit cleaner and a little bit more explicit, which I like. Let's summarize this. Type throws have been requested a lot by a lot of people in the past, well, let's say decade. It's nine years, but let's say decade. Um, and I think folks are gonna be pretty happy that we have them now because they do help us improve API design quite a bit, but it is a bit sad that we can only specify a single type, but I understand why that is, right? If we are allowed to specify a lot of types, then we're still gonna end up with a catch that basically doesn't know what kind of error it's going to get, right? So we need to be explicit there. It's also very understandable that once we call multiple functions that have different throwing, uh, that have different errors that they can throw, that we revert back to any error in our catch. It's all completely understandable, but it does kind of make me say that I probably won't go all in on typed errors straight away. If you're an SDK developer, for example, it might make total sense for you to say, 
let's go on and give our API methods specific errors, even if there's going to be another case or whatever on there, you might actually want to, to, to type your SDK errors to be a specific type so that the user of your SDK knows that it's going to get something that matches an error that you prepared for them. If you're building an app and you're going to be using typed errors internally for your own app without shipping it as an SDK, I feel like typed errors might not be what you need at the moment. It's worth trying, it's worth experimenting with, but I personally probably will just leave it at experimenting uh, for a little while. But who knows, once it's out, maybe it feels great, maybe it's exactly what I've been wanting. Um, we'll have to see. With that, I would like to ask you, what do you think of typed errors? Are you gonna use them straight away? And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.